Hi friends, Santosh here and today I am going to deliver my lecture on practical highway engineering and which deals with the PQC cracks, its different types, causes and remedies. It is very important lecture as far as practical highway engineers are concerned because nowadays there is a construction of concrete highway everywhere and we found several cracks on pavement quality concrete so this lecture is very important for highway engineers so let us start the lecture first of all <laughs> the abstract of this lecture or this presentation is india in india there is a boom of infrastructure and everywhere there are highways and that highways are constructed with the concrete and such a highway is found several types of cracks and we are going to discuss that various types of cracks and <coughs> their uh, remedial measures to prevent that cracking or to repair that cracking. First of all, why that cracks are developed on concrete? First of all, these cracks are developed due to temperature difference that is very important also lead joint cutting is a cause of cracking and defective curing and also defective sub base are all the causes of failure of concrete pavements the cracks will allow water mud debris going into the cracks and widen them further so this widening of these cracks are very dangerous as far as service life of concrete pavements are concerned and shrinkage is also another cause of cracking you know the shrinkage what is the shrinkage the shrinkage means reduction in volume of concrete because the water from the concrete uh, uh, over a period of time that water gradually uh, removes from that concrete due to temperature and there is a shrinkage means reduction in volume of concrete and it causes the crock cracking and the chemical reaction you all people know that that is the hydration takes place and it also gives the strength to the concrete but due to shrinkage there is a cracking of concrete and <clears throat> also increase in vehicular traffic and changing environmental conditions also reduces the service life of that concrete pavement and the cracking is the most common feature of that rigid pavements and fatigue cracking is considered as a major cause of failure of rigid pavements so let us discuss the various types of concrete cracking first of all we are going to classify these cracks into three categories first crack is narrow cracks second crack type of crack is medium cracks classification and third is the wide cracks the cracks which are below 0.5 mm are treated as a narrow cracks the cracks which are in between 0.5 mm to 1.5 mm are treated as a medium cracks and the cracks which are greater than 1.5 mm are treated as a wide cracks in narrow cracks there is a full aggregate interlock and full load transfer but in medium cracks there is partial aggregate interlock and partial load transfer but in case of wide crack there is no aggregate interlock and no load transfer so wide cracks are very dangerous medium are medium but they <clears throat> they must be repaired at the earliest because they are going to become wide cracks as early as possible if uh, uh, remedial measures are not taken and narrow cracks also due consideration is to be given to fill that narrow cracks then we are going to discuss the settlement of GSB or sub base <clears throat> you know the layer structure of road the bottom bottom part is the um, sub base over sub base there is a DLC so over GSB there is a DLC over DLC this is PQC DLC means dry line concrete PQC means pavement quality concrete and these are the important components of the any concrete road so that settlement of GSB there are various types first is the initial settlement second is the continuing settlement third type is uniform settlement 
and fourth type is the differential settlement. These are the various types of settlements. Initial settlement means it's settled initially due to loading pattern. Then continuing settlement means it continuously takes place <coughs> beyond that initial settlement. And uniform settlement means the settlement is at equal rate and differential settlement means the settlement uh, takes place at different rates means settlement is different at different places but in uniform settlement the settlement is uniform so these are the four types of settlement in the sub base and which causes the cracking so you must know what is the initial settlement you must know the which is, which is continuing settlement uniform settlement and non-uniform settlement then we are going to discuss the failure types and causes first is the fatigue what is the fatigue failure of concrete the fatigue failure of concrete road is a phenomenon by virtue of which the pavement fails under the repetitive loading by a load smaller than that cause the failure in single application means smaller loads are applied on the concrete pavement surface and which <coughs> due to that load transfer which are smaller than that of single application damage these loads causes the cracking and such a cracking is termed as a fatigue cracking according to studies number of factors contribute to fatigue damage of pavement which includes the heat of hydration of cement or concrete low thermal conductivity and shrinkage and creep so what are the remedial measures for that fatigue cracking that proper and uniform thickness throughout the length of pavement is very important and high modulus of rupture is to be designed for that PQC. And second is the use of low heat cement. Our particular type of cement must be used for that pavement quality concrete. Then we are going to discuss the pumping. What is the pumping? The name itself indicates there is a pumping of water through the pavement quality concrete. And why this pumping is occurred? because of uh, sub base the sub base waterlogged sub base is there and that water comes out through the joints and such a phenomenon is called as a pumping or mud pumping such a phenomenon is observed near mumbai pune expressway near the adoshi tunnel there is a phenomenon of mud pumping and <clears throat> nowadays it is repaired but initially that mud pumping is there and water comes out from the joint of that PQC <coughs> then due to mud pumping there is a corner breaking also there is a linear cracking also and there is a faulting of concrete slab and what are the remedial measures for that pumping is the full depth repair is uh, required for that repair of that pumping stabilizing of slab adjacent to the pumping area is equally important as a loss of subgrade base or sub base material would have takes place after the pumping so adjacent slabs or adjacent panels must be repaired and the problem of permeability of pavement and poor drainage of soil shall be addressed so that poor sub base or poor drainage facilities must be repaired or must be improved please look at this figure in this figure <coughs> this figure you see that the water is coming out from the pavement from the base. This is the water coming out from the pavement and such a phenomenon is called as a mud pumping. Then faulting. What is the faulting? Faulting means vertical differential movement of the slab adjacent to the joint or crack is called as a faulting. And faulting may be longitudinal means in longitudinal direction or it may be in transverse direction. And the primary cause of faulting is slab pumping also. And the other possible causes are thermal and moisture stresses. And faulting become noticeable if average value of that vertical lift reaches to 2.5 mm. The major problem of the faulting is the roughness and unevenness in the pavement which affects the riding quality. <coughs> so uh, the faulting is avoided as far as possible. Please look at this figure this is the movement of the slab or this is the movement of the slab vertical movement of the slab due to pumping and <coughs> such a uh, defect is termed as a faulting 
so what are the remedial measures for this faulting is the diamond grinding and what is diamond grinding it is nothing but the grinding of the top surface of the pqc up to 4 to 6 mm by means of closely spaced diamond saw blades as to improve the pavement riding quality and dowel bar retrofitting is also done and we are going to discuss that dowel bar retrofitting afterwards then the next four type of failure of concrete pavement is the spalling what is the spalling the cracking breaking or chipping of the edges of the cracks joints edges of the pavement system as a spalling joint spalling is usually noticed when within the 300 mm from the face of longitudinal or transverse joints so spalling is observed near the joints so please look at this figure here is joint and this there is a breaking and chipping of the pqc and what is the remedial measure for that <coughs> spalling is the partial depth or full depth repair are the remedies for the shallow and deep spalling respectively we are going to discuss it briefly okay then the fifth type of <coughs> cracking is the shrinkage cracking and you all you people almost know that uh, shrinkage cracking is <coughs> observed during setting and hardening of the pavement concrete at places away from the joints we seen a hairline cracks there and such a hairline cracks are termed as a shrinkage cracks shrinkage cracks are not found to extend throughout the slab thickness and severe severity of damage due to shrinkage cracks depend upon the width and orientation of that cracks and what are the remedial measures for that shrinkage cracks it can be uh, filled with the sealants also synthetic resin is generally used as a crack sealant and entire slab replacement may be done when <coughs> there is a severe shrinkage cracking throughout the panel so please look at this shrinkage cracking please look at this shrinkage cracking small cracking small hairline cracking away from the joint okay so such a cracking is termed as a shrinkage cracking then this is nowadays common type of cracking or failure of pqc that is polished aggregate we see in such a type of aggregate formation on the top of pqc okay and such a uh, uh, failure is termed as a polished aggregate and the aggregates which protrude out of cement paste with less angularity and roughness are said to be polished aggregates such a type of aggregates are called as a polished aggregate or failure is called as a polished aggregate and when abrasion value of the uh, aggregate is low in such a case we observe this defect of polished aggregate and it causes the riding discomfort also so to avoid this polished aggregate what is the remedial measures avoid means to rectify that we we are going to use the diamond grinding with the diamond blades or an overlay is the solution to the problem of polished aggregates in case of rigid pavement so first is the diamond grinding and second is the overlay then seven type of failure of concrete is the punch out we seen in this figure that slab is broken into number of pieces or number of <coughs> several pieces and it is the localized behavior of the concrete slab and corrosion and inadequacy of steel are the key factors for punch out failure in continuously reinforced pavements excessive width and closeness of shrinkage cracks to promote the punch out also and punching makes the cracks to spall and disintegrate them so punch out is also dangerous and punch out problem are addressed by full depth repair we have to remove the panel fully in case of punch out so you must know the punch out then failure of joint load transfer system what is that failure of joint load transfer system please look at this figure at the joint the pavement gate here at the joint this is the joint and here that joint load transfer system failure is observed it is due to product of corrosion which occupies certain volume will reduce the tensile stress around the dowel bar 
and excess corrosion weakens the dowel bar which may prematurely fail due to repetitive loading. Bending of dowel bar and their closeness to the slab edge will induce the localized stresses which may be high enough to break the pavement at that corner. So what are the remedial measures that usually the pavement is restored by full depth repair or full depth patch at affected area after replacement of failed joint load transfer system. So full depth repair is required for failure of joint load transfer system. Then linear cracking. Uh, linear cracking <coughs> divides the individual slab or individual panel into two parts and extend across the entire slab. The phenomenon of linear cracking is also referred as a panel cracking as discussed earlier. Linear cracking will affect the riding quality of pavement. Linear cracking will allow the moisture in the body of pavement as a result of which erosion of the base and sub base may take place which leads to the loss of soil support to the pavement. If it is not sealed properly, the cracks may spell and disintegrate. The possible causes of linear cracking are heavy traffic, temperature gradient, curing of slabs and moisture stresses and loss of soil support. So <clears throat> to avoid this crack sealant can be used at initial stage to seal the, that linear cracking. If linear cracking leads to panel cracking then the pavement is restored by full depth repair. So this is also common type of failure nowadays for concrete pavements. Then durability cracking or decracking. It is termed as a decracking and it is characterized, uh, characterized by the sequence of crescent shaped closely spaced hairline cracking pattern. That closely spaced hairline cracking pattern is observed here. So such a type of cracking is called as a durability of cracking and it occurs adjacent to the joints, cracks, free edges and normally starts from the slab corners or panel corners. Cracking pattern is characterized, uh, characterized by dark coloring of affected and surrounding area. So color get changed and the color becomes dark. Aggregates that are susceptible to the freeze thaw are responsible for decracking and due to which roughness of pavement surface, spelling and eventual dis disintegration of pavement may take place. Decracking is the problem of aggregate which are susceptible to the freeze thaw damage. So, uh, properties of aggregates are also important in case of PQC because PQC is made up of aggregate, it is made up of cement also and it is made up of, uh, it is combination of water also and admixtures also. So, you can use that mixture very judiciously <coughs> and avoid this type of failures in the PQC. And what are the remedial measures for that? The affected pavement may be refurbished or by partial depth repair or by full depth repair depending upon the severity of damage. But if problem may persist, if aggregate remain vulnerable to freeze thaw attack. So the aggregate is very important and don't use such a type of aggregates and to avoid such a type of failure. So 11 type of that failure of PQC is corner break. We seen everywhere that this is the corner and this corner is bracked here. So this is called as a corner breaking, a crack that intersects the joint of pavement near the corner of slab within 200 mm is called as a corner break or corner crack. It can extend through the entire slab also. This causes the responsible for the corner break or high corner stresses for corner the stresses are on higher side. Corner breaks leads into infiltration of moisture, faulting, spalling and disintegration of the pavement slab and full depth repairs are required for that corner break. Okay. Then alkali aggregate reaction. Please look at this photograph and such a type of pavement we observed at certain places and such a failure is due to alkali aggregate reaction. What is alkali aggregate reaction? Aggregate contain reactive silica and that inter interact with the alkali. Alkali means sodium oxide and <coughs> potassium oxide present in the cement and it is formed the expansive alkali silicate gel that 
alkali silicate gel and which disrupts the top of the slab and such a phenomenon is termed as an alkali aggregate reaction and <coughs> factors that promote the reaction is reactive aggregates means type of aggregate is very important high alkali content of cement and moisture and conductive temperature conditions what are the remedial measures use of non reactive aggregates is very important to avoid this alkali reaction and use of air entertaining agents is also important to avoid this alkali aggregate reaction then pop outs these pop outs are also observed in certain areas what is pop out a small portion of concrete slab is taken away around 25 to 100 mm diameter and having a depth of 13 to 50 mm and such a uh, removal of concrete is termed as a pop out and pop out causes discomfort to the riding and are not repaired unless post threat to the tires of the vehicle they are dangerous for the tires for the vehicle and remedial measures is partial depth repair for that pop outs what are the blow ups please look at this figure the slab is like this that is blow up why it is occur blow up please mm, there are compressive stresses are induced at that joints and which causes the lifting of that pqc and such a lifting of pqc is known as a blow up and it is due to increase of compressive stresses at the joints or the cracks and blow, blow up is the consequences of compressive joint failure spalling of joint decracking and freeze thaw damage will hasten the process of formation of the blow up and what is the remedial measures for that blow up full depth repair is required it only alternative for that blow ups then repairs and restoration of rigid pavements and this is also important we discussed in uh, briefly here crack filling crack filling is done for the cracks usually less than 2 mm and <coughs> it is filled up with low viscosity epoxy or polymer modified asphalt are used as a crack filler crack sealing crack sealing is required for the joints or cracks more than 2 mm and in this case the crack is chiseled out to the trapezoidal notch of 30 to 40 mm deep and application of tack coat is there and sealed sealing is done by using the epoxy resin mortar or epoxy mortar for that crack filling then third is the stitching nowadays it is very popular and i am going to deliver one practical uh, video lecture on that stitching of concrete panels what is the stitching it is just like a stitching of cloth we have to stitch that panel it is the repair technique to maintain the aggregate interlock at the point of cracking and to provide the additional reinforcement and strength strengthen that pavement stitching is carried out for strengthening of longitudinal cracks in the slab stitching is also adopted Uh, to alleviate the problem of omission of tie bars during the construction if there is omission of tie bars we have to do the stitching to tie the roadway lanes and to center line longitudinal joints of the pavements there are three types of stitching generally used in india that is or everywhere that is cross stitching slot stitching and u bar stitching in cross stitching the holes are drilled at an angle to intersect that uh, to intersect the that uh, uh, crack uh, they are drilled at, at certain angle and such a uh, stitching is called as a cross stitching and dust is removed by compressed air and epoxy is injected in that holes in slot stitching when <coughs> slots with lengths no smaller than 600 mm are cut approximately perpendicular to the longitudinal joint as shown in this figure this is the longitudinal joint and slots are slots are there these these are slots having length not less than 600 mm okay and these slots are cut, cut by slot cutting machine and slots are prepared by removing the concrete and cleaning the uh, slot and u bar stitching i am going to explain that method in my further lectures in u bar stitching slots are cut using the slot cutting machine and concrete is broken and removed by pneumatic hammer 
In this method, anchoring by U-bar provides the most of the restraining force and proper backfilling around the ends of the U-bar is important. So, in this slots, the U-bar is inserted and such a stitching is termed as a U-bar stitching. Then we are going to discuss the partial depth repair. Partial depth repair name itself indicates the uh, repair is not at the full depth and this method is used to correct the several distresses which are mentioned above identification of deteriorated concrete then demarcation of that then removal of that distressed concrete then cleaning then joint preparation then application of bonding agent placing the patching material texturing curing and joint sealing are the sequential operations before the pavement is open to the traffic and cementitious grout is used as a bonding agent and the patch mixture should have strength of concrete as that of existing pavement means if m40 grade is used for pqc the same grade is used for that partial depth repair if properly done partial depth repair can perform well for three to ten years so please look at this figure and <coughs> there is a corner uh, at the corner the partial depth repair process is going on then full depth repair Full depth repair is means removal of whole panel of concrete. Structural integrity and functioning of rigid pavements can be restored by full depth repairs. Here full depth part of the slab is removed and replaced by new concrete patch. 32 mm diameter doyle bars at spacing 300 mm are usually inserted by means of automatic doyle drilling rigs and the holes of the doyle bars are grouted after insertions of the doyle bar. The opening of traffic is as is well as regular concrete PQC pavement and a conventional, uh, conventional concrete is, low, is slow to gain the strength uh, so it is required to modify its property for early opening so uh, uh, curing time is reduced then doyle bar retrofit the figure itself indicates how the doyle, uh, doyle bars are retrofitted this rehabilitation technique is applicable for only jointed concrete pavements then low load transfer efficiency means less than 60% transfer defle deflection pavement slabs are the reason for the doyle bar retrofitting. So whenever there is a faulting, whenever there is a differential deflection of the slab, in such a case doyle bar retrofitting is done and care should be taken not to hit the doyle with the vibrator since touching doyle with the vibrator and aggregate in the mix should be small enough to allow the concrete to flow around the bar and consolidate properly. Then diamond grinding as discussed earlier diamond grinding removes a thin layer at the top of the PQC with the help of closely spaced diamond blades it is often used to restore or improve the riding ability of the pavement it is also used to restoring bumps in newly placed concrete pavements especially at the transverse construction joints and the uncut concrete between each saw cut breaks off more or less at constant level above the saw cut grooves leaving a level surface with longitudinal textures means <coughs> diamond grinding is done whenever there is a level difference and we have to grind that top surface of the PQC to make that surface good for riding quality so what is the conclusion of this lecture or what is the conclusion of this presentation is you have to take proper care and we have to instruct the site staff and <coughs> precautions to be taken during concrete paving otherwise it will be very difficult and costly to remove the concrete when it has been set if the cracks wider than 1.5 mm <coughs> then full depth repair is required that is very important staple pins and crossbar stitching helps in arresting the cracks and avoid the further deterioration of the panel and the sub base so stitching is very good technique for that and it enhances the life of the slab so you can adopt <coughs> the stitching to enhance the life of the pqc or the slab this is very important the presence of boulders in the subgrade gsb should not be more than 75 mm and it should not be more than one third layer thickness if the layer thickness is 
300 mm so one third is 100 mm like that you have to calculate but it should not be more than 75 mm to avoid the chances of settlement the presence of any foreign or organic material in the subgrade is not allowed <coughs> the compaction is very important so size of boulder in the sub base is the first major precautions to be taken second is the proper compaction so what is the compaction it minimizes the voids and then sealing of all kinds of cracks in the pqc is done instantly <coughs> without any further development that is very important and contractors are not going to take the care and when the crack widens then they are going to uh, start the repairing of that uh, cracks but it is not a case you must repair that whenever they are observed an independent engineer or engineer on the site should <coughs> mind that they should repair that cracks as early as possible and whenever there is a full panel replacement required it should be done along with the sub base to avoid the chances of reoccurrence of the cracks and it is <coughs> very important to repair the sub base also the references for this uh, presentation is irc 15 irc 77 irc sp 83 IRC 57 and IRC 11433 so thank you for all engineers for listening my lectures very calmly it is somewhat uh, big lecture or somewhat uh, time consuming lecture but it is very important as far as uh, concrete payments are concerned and for more details and notes you may contact my administrator or you may email me on that email address so till then bye bye okay bye